Any questions for Adam? Head coach Jared Bednar, Peter Ball, the Athletic. Hey, Jared, how are you doing? Good, you? I'm well. Um, first off, I thought Miko was supposed to get back tomorrow. Was the more relaxed protocol, is that why he was able to come back earlier, number one? And then number two, how did uh, he and O'Connor look? Yeah, that's exactly why. His uh, test with his cycle threshold was in the uh, range that allows him to come back after the five days. So he, they, I think he was at day nine and O'Connor had already served 10. So um, both guys look pretty good. You know, you could tell it was a little bit harder work for them than some of the other guys. Um, OC looked like he was uh, hurting a little bit from a uh, conditioning standpoint, but luckily we still have three days here before two two more practices before we play Anaheim. Terry, Colorado Hockey now. The taxi squad is obviously designed so you can have readily you can have manpower readily at hand. Are there other things that it, it, you can use it for, like evaluation? And you worry about taking guys away from ice time in Loveland for development purposes? Yeah, no, we won't do that. We we won't um, use it for an evaluation. Uh, you know, aspect of it. It'll be strictly if we're heading out on the road, instead of having to recall guys and put them right onto our roster um, and on our salary cap, we'll have the option to recall a couple of guys, keep them on taxi and, and make sure we're traveling with enough bodies in case something happens on the road. And then when we're home, we'll just kind of run it like we have been in the past. If they're, if they're at home and we're at home, we'll leave our guys there to play. Which is one of the reasons why, uh, even when we were short, that we we sent Maltsev down to to get him playing those two games in Iowa because we want him to play hockey games. It's more important than coming up in here and practicing. Hi, Jared. It looks like you're going to have a, as full a roster as you've probably had since the season even started, with a couple of exceptions. How anxious are you to see how this team? can play with so many guys back and also does it does it look like most of the rust is gone other than say Miko and Logan today yeah I think we're getting there for sure you know guys um, most of the guys that I've talked to were hurting a little bit from a conditioning standpoint in the first couple of days there was some rust I think most guys have worked through that uh, I thought we beat the puck up a little bit today in, in the first part of the practice anyway. Um, but it's often like that after a day off. Um, but their legs are feeling better. The energy level's better. I've liked their practices, um, the commitment to, to play the way we want to play it within our practice and, and different um, aspects of our structure. So I think we're certainly head, heading in the right direction. I'm glad we still have two more practices, though. Jesse Matano, DNVR. Hey, Coach, um, obviously kind of just building off that, nobody wants to deal with these pauses, but are you guys finding the, the silver lining in this couple extra days off to get guys healed up with some bumps and bruises? Um, and then, again, kind of like Rick just said, looks like you guys had as close to a full roster as you've had since training camp today. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, and to touch it, it's that that it is what it is. So, I mean, we're going to look at the positives out of it anyway. There's no use uh, dwelling on the negative. We're playing some pretty good hockey before the pause, um, even without guys. But it's certainly nice to get um, our, as close to our full roster as we've had all year back here for, for the Anaheim game. And hopefully we can continue uh, with that through the course of the season because we're, we're getting really busy here. We're going to play a lot of games in, in not that many nights from here to the end of the season. Um, so we're going to need all of our guys healthy and being able to be options for us to play in the games. And uh, hopefully we even have some extras that we can uh, substitute in as guys get banged up or need some rest. So that that's important. I think if you're, if you're really trying to put your best foot forward on, on every, every night and, and trying to grab those points. Um, I am looking forward to having them in, you know, I think it's going to take some time again, but slotting all the guys in where we see them as most effective, I think is is one of the ways that you do have success as a team and uh, especially when you're playing on every second night with back-to-backs mixed in I think next week we have or within the next three weeks we have three back-to-backs mixed in there so we're going to need everyone including both goaltenders hey Jared apologies if this was answered but the new COVID protocols do those by any in any way affect uh, Darren Helm and Pavel Francouz yeah, they do for sure. I mean, as long as they can have a negative POC test after five days or they meet the cycle threshold, 
um, the range that, that is acceptable to get him back. So instead of sitting 10 days for both of those guys, we could see Frankie back as early as tomorrow and then Helm back as early as the next day. Yeah, Jared, other than potentially the like some of those guys coming back, you mentioned Maltsev. Do you expect him to come back up after the, the games in Iowa or will he stay with the Eagles for a little bit? He'll stay with the Eagles now because we're getting all of our guys back. We have a full roster. So, like I said, we're, we're not going to recall guys to have them sit here and not play when they can be playing with the Eagles. Is it dizzying to follow what's going up in Canada and trying to keep it all straight, or do you have even time to worry about it and think about it? I don't with the even, NHL. I mean, it, it affects us. So, I mean, I think that's why some rules are set up is there you have to follow different guidelines in Canada and they want it to be consistent but I mean we're just kind of following what we need to to, to have our guys available and ready to play and that, you know I, I can't be worried about every other team I have enough to worry about when it comes to our roster and, and putting it together and making sure we're ready to play for the next game. All right thank you Jared. Thank you. Our defenseman Aaron Johnson. Peter Athletic. Hey, Eric, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Um, how how did you kind of spend your time off? Were you able to get much training in or do do anything on your own while you're away from the team? Yeah, luckily I have a gym at home and um, I was able to leave the house. I, had, I didn't test positive, so that was good. And then one of my neighbors have an outdoor rink with a air conditioner and Got some ice, so that was that was nice to stay on the ice a little bit. How close are you, both personally and as a team, to to being capable of playing all out, one hundred percent professional hockey by the weekend? Um, probably pretty good. I would think. I think we'll probably be healthy for the first time all year. Um, you know, it's no different than coming into training camp and then, um, you know, kind of get into some preseason games. Obviously the games are more important now, but I think uh, guys are hungry and healthy and ready to go. And I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll have pretty much a full roster for the first time all year. And I think that's exciting for us. Were any of the other guys who didn't test positive, did, did anyone join you at the outdoor rink that you had access to? Uh, no, um, we just were, Kind of staying apart, not um, taking any risks with um, kind of how fast the virus was spreading through our team. So we just we kind of stayed uh, as isolated as we could, um, not really seeing each other too much, except at the at the rink when we were coming into tests every day. Terry Fry, Colorado Hockey Now. Terry. I believe you grew up playing on an outdoor rink in in Minnesota. In yeah, the like neighborhood. Why does your neighbor have a rink and you don't? Uh, I have enough access to ice, I would say, during the season. And uh, they have a couple of little kids who are local hockey players. And um, they uh, have the boards and the refrigeration system. So it's pretty, it's a pretty nice setup. And uh, he just has a bigger yard than me, too. Two more here for Eric. Peter Bothy, Oh, uh, What's it? I guess been like having Bo Byram and Ryan Murray both back and kind of getting back into the swing of things. Yeah, nice. I mean, they're both uh, real valuable for us and especially Bo. I think he probably would have been rookie of the year if he'd played all year. I think he still might have a chance at it. Um, he was playing so well. So good to see him back out there. Looks as good as new and uh, Murray looks good too. So hopefully they can uh, come in and make an impact for us here soon. And last one here, Terry Fry. You got your Olympic experience when you were pretty young, 2010. You know, by now, at the way this is working out, the, the NHL is not going to have gone for eight years. Do, do you feel bad for the U.S. players, especially who are missing the experience of the of playing in the Olympics, the younger yeah. guys especially? Yeah, I think it's, it's unfortunate, um, but that's just kind of the world we're in right now. Um, I was lucky enough to get silver in Vancouver um, in an unbelievable atmosphere. I don't know how great that atmosphere would have been this year in China. So I think, uh, you know, hopefully guys get a chance to experience the Olympics in North America 
at some point. It was such an awesome experience for me in Vancouver. And uh, I know guys that I had played with at, in Salt, Salt Lake City. And um, so hopefully there's a chance that, uh, you know, hockey will be back in the Olympics. And North America in that great atmosphere. I mean, the Canada US games were just unbelievable. So um, it's definitely unfortunate for the guys that haven't played in the Olympics before and they haven't got that experience. So hopefully um, we're back as soon as possible. And if not, they um, throw a couple of World Cups in there. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take questions for Adam, defenseman Jack Johnson, Peter Ball, The Athletic. Hey, Jack, how are you doing? Doing well, how are you? I am wow. Um, I guess how did you spend your time off? Were you kind of able to avoid the virus when it was going around the team? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just uh, I mean, had a good Christmas. Uh, tried to you know stay. I mean, honestly, I I avoid people and stuff in my normal life, so nothing was out was out of the ordinary for me. Terry Fry, Colorado Hockey Now. How has been how has been playing with Eric Johnson flashing back to 12 years? How has been how has been how has it been playing with him? Has it been everything is advertised in hoped? Yeah, I mean it's um he and I go back a long way, all the way back to the development program. And um he's been an absolute pleasure to play with. I enjoy him uh playing with him on the ice. I enjoy being with him off the ice. And uh, you know, th through the years we've had time to spend together with other USA hockey tournaments. And uh, it's it, it's been a blast to be able to reunite on an NHL team with them. Kyle Fredrickson, Denver Post. Uh, Jared Bednar said that the guys were a little bit lethargic after the break, getting into practice again. Just after today's session, just to, you notice that guys are starting to take some some step forward to, to being ready in a few days here? Yeah, I, I think that was expected, um, you know, after a layoff like that. Uh, it might take a couple of days to get back into uh, – the swing of things and get the, the the step and the pop that you want to have out on the ice and um you know have clean puck touches and all the things that you expect to have mid-season yeah this kind of curiosity question i read uh that brady quinn is your your brother-in-law um one i guess just what's your relationship like with him and two have you become at all more of a notre dame fan um or cbs <laughs> sports viewer now that, now that you're in the family yeah, no, we're uh, very close. Uh, the, the, the entire family's close, all the brother-in-laws, sister-in-laws. Uh, we, we all talk quite a bit. And um, yeah, I watch uh, uh, Fox Big Noon kickoff every Saturday when I can just to uh, um, check out and see how he's doing. And uh, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a soft spot for Notre Dame now. Last one here for Jack. Terry and Brian, Colorado Hockey now. You alluded to your joint Olympic experience with Eric in 2010. It's going to be since 2014 that NHL players have been in the Olympics. How, how do you feel for those younger wave of U.S. hockey talent that's not going to be able to play in the Olympics, apparently, for another four years at least? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's 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 really sad. Um, you know, I can't I can't even imagine how frustrated they are. Some some guys only get one shot and uh you know, it's um, it's it's an experience that if 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 you're deserving to be on a team like that, it's it's a once in a lifetime experience. And um, you know, I I I feel really bad for those guys. Uh, genuinely, uh, it's it's sad. All right, thank you, Jack.